The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to St. Saviour's Church today, and to those of you joining us online as well, you're very welcome to be with us. We offer this Mass today for the greater glory of God, and particularly we offer it for all those who are to be ordained these coming weeks to the sacred priesthood, and especially for Father Glenn Thomas, Father Alan Rimmer, Father Josh Delia, and Father David Povo. In our gospel today, our Lord tells us that by their fruits we shall know them. But this is not just a warning to us to pay attention to those who would come and preach new and dangerous messages, but it's true for each and every one of us in our own lives as Christians. By our fruits shall we be known, and we are challenged afresh in this Mass to consider how it is that we live our lives as Christians. Do others see us as Christians by the fruits, by what we do, by how we act, by what we say? And so, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind the times we have not acted in godly and Christian ways, in ways of love and charity, and call to mind those times of sin, trusting in God's ever-loving mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. It happened that the word of the Lord was spoken to Abram in a vision. Have no fear, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. My Lord, Abram replied, what do you intend to give me? I go childless. Then Abram said, See, you have given me no descendants. Some man of my household will be my heir. And then this word of the Lord was spoken to him. He shall not be your heir. Your heir shall be of your own flesh and blood. Then taking him outside, he said, Look up to heaven and count the stars if you can. Such will be your descendants, he told him. Abram put his faith in the Lord who counted this as making him justified. I am the Lord, he said to him, who brought you out of awe of the Chaldeans to make you heir to this land. My Lord, Abram replied, how am I to know that I shall inherit it? He said to him, get me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these, cut them in half, and put half on one side and half facing it on the other. The birds he did not cut in half. Birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them off. Now as the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and terror seized him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, there appeared a smoking furnace and a firebrand that went between the halves. That day the Lord made a covenant with Abram in these terms. To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Amen. The response to the psalm, 
The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, tell his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Be proud of his holy name, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength, constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O children of Abraham, his servant, O sons of the Jacob he chose, he, the Lord, is our God. His judgments prevail in all the earth. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Because of your love, give me life, and I will do your will. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you disguised as sheep, but underneath are ravenous wolves. You will be able to tell them by their fruits. Can people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, a sound tree produces good fruit, but a rotten tree, bad fruit. A sound tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a rotten tree bear good fruit. Any tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown on the fire. I repeat, you will be able to tell them by their fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You will be able to tell them by their fruits. A famous, a well-known part of this Gospel and of Scripture and here a very clear warning from our Lord for us to look at the fruits, to look at the results, look at the outcome of those who would come to us preaching and telling us how we should live, especially if they are to be false prophets, those who are disguised and dishonest. But it's very much the case that all of us will be known by our fruits. All of us will be known not just by God, but by our neighbors, by our friends, by those who see us day to day, by how we live and by the results of that. And it's a challenge to us to think if we are truly putting into practice, if we are truly living as we should live. Do we put into practice, do we live, do we act and speak as if the things that we believe within us, that we declare in the creed, are true? Do we live believing truly in God's love for us? Do we live like we are loved, loved beyond all measure, without limit, without condition? Do we live joyfully? Do we live cheerfully? Do we live our lives each and every day confident in that love? And do we act like it? And what are those times when things are going wrong, when there is pain, when there is sadness, when there's difficulty? Do we live with a trust that that love of God is still there, that it hasn't disappeared, that he hasn't and will never disappear? We trust instead that he is with us through those difficult and dark and painful times. We believe and we profess that all are made in God's image, each and every person made in the image of God, something declared from the very beginning of our faith found, the very beginning of Genesis. We say we believe that. Do we act as if it is true? Do we love our neighbors? Do we love those we encounter? Do we love every person? Do we try to do this without limit? Or do we try to avoid those who are difficult, those who are troublesome, those who are demanding or draining? Because if we do, then we're not living truly as if 
God has made each and every person in his own image. It's a hard thing, a difficult thing. It can seem sometimes an impossible thing, but nonetheless, it is how we must live if we truly believe that everyone, everyone here, everyone watching, everyone will encounter in the streets outside are made in God's image. Do we believe in our own lives that God is merciful? We say we do. Do we act like this? Do we come to him when we have done wrong, as we do and repeatedly do? Do we confess the wrongs we've done, trusting in his mercy? Be that on our own, in our prayers, in confession, availing ourselves of that sacrament with a priest, or in the general confession at Mass. Whenever it is, do we say to God, yes, I have done wrong? Do we bring to him the times we have failed, or do we try foolishly to hide them, to keep them secret from him, even though, of course, nothing is secret from him? There are hard things we believe, too, hard things that we profess. We know that there will be no forgiveness for us, as Jesus has taught explicitly, if we do not forgive others. Do we live like this, or do we bear grudges? Do we think that our withholding of forgiveness is justified in this particular case? Do we live truly as if our Lord and Saviour will come to judge the quick and the dead? He will judge with mercy, yes, but nevertheless there will be judgment. Do we live knowing that that judgment is to come, or do we live for ourselves doing what we want? These are big questions. These are things talking about the very principles, the fundamentals, the foundations of our faith. But they impact, or they should, how we live day to day, each and every day, how we behave, how we think, how we speak, and act to other people. Even in what might be seen as smaller things, in our smaller actions, we can and do not always put our faith into action. We think of, for example, the Mass. We believe that Christ is made present on this altar. We believe that he is truly present there, that he is present there in the tabernacle, in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. If we believe this, do we act like it? Do we give it the reverence that it deserves? Do we give him the reverence he deserves? Do we spend time in adoration and contemplation of him? What an incredible gift it is to be able to sit in that chapel, in the presence of God. Do we do so? Not nearly enough. This is true, of course, of all of us. Perhaps I'll finish with prayer. We believe that God listens to our prayers. We believe that he answers our prayers. We believe that if we ask for things in Jesus' name, he will grant them. And do we do this? Do we do this enough? Do we come before him in prayer enough? Praying for ourselves, praying for others, offering up the cares and the needs of the world as we will do here shortly. We must act, we must live as if what we believe is true, for we believe it is true. We need the courage, the grace from God that pushes us over that pushes us over that line, that pushes us to act out our faith as well as to profess it with our mouths. The ways in which we will all do this will be different. We will have different opportunities to show our faith in action. Perhaps above all, we should always be sharing this wonderful gift that we have with others, sharing it joyfully, sharing it cheerfully, as we seek to live joyfully and cheerfully, so that others may look at us living, may look at how we act and speak and live, and by our fruits, they will know us, our faith, and our God. Amen. Now in the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Jesus Christ, we bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Lord, as we gather here to give you praise and worship, 
we pray that you would grant to us the grace and courage we need to live out the faith we have in you. May we proclaim it boldly in all we say and all we do. May we live now and always confident of your love, trusting in your mercy, filled with love and compassion for all those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray that your church may be filled with this love and compassion, this knowledge of your love and mercy, that she may share it with all people, that she may be a beacon of light and joy and hope in the world, wherever she is, here in this town, in this village, in this parish, here in this nation and across the world. And we pray for those you have called to be the leaders of that church. We pray for Pope Francis, for Patriarch Bartholomew, and for Archbishop Justin. We pray for our own Bishop Martin and for Will, his suffragan. We pray that they may lead us in this life, living joyfully, living filled with love, living sharing that love with others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray in our wider communion for the Diocese of Christ Church. We pray for its bishops, clergy, and people. And in our own diocese, we pray for the parish, parish of St. Matthias in Brighton, for its clergy, its people. We pray that they may flourish as witnesses to your love in that place. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray that you would pour down your blessings on this church and this place, on this family who gather here, who gather in person, in spirit and online. We pray that we would grow in love of you and of one another, that we would grow in number, that we would grow in strength and confidence to proclaim the gospel and to serve your people. Lord, in your mercy, bring comfort and healing, Lord. We pray to those members of our family who are sick, who suffer in body, in mind, or in spirit. We pray by name for Manfred and Claire, for Tony, Kit and Joy, Moira and David, Christopher and Joshua, for Ken and Margaret, for Kim and Phil, for Rita, for Alex, for Nick, Clara and Romilly, for Carol and for Mia, for Lindley, for Catherine, for Jose and Eddie, for Charles, Anthony, Andrew and Charlotte, for Nikki and for Mary. Father, we pray that they and all those who suffer may know your healing, loving and comforting presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, bring comfort too, we pray, to those who mourn, especially to Charlotte, to Les and the friends of Alistair, and to the family and friends of Richard Elliot. May they and all who mourn loved ones know the hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, confident in that hope, we commend to you all those who have died recently, among them Paul Mansfield, Gordon Wolveridge, priest, Noreen Bingham, Alistair Nicholson, Dylan, Richard Elliott, Bruce Oliver, Dave Kirsty, Keith Loudon, and Anthony Evans. We pray too for Robert Collins, Frederick Feller, Marjorie Neese, Beverly Cochran, and Maud Matthews, whose anniversaries of death fall this week. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Father, in a moment of silence, we bring to you and offer up our own prayers and petitions. These we add to our prayers, trusting constantly in the intercession of all the saints in heaven, especially of St. Peter and St. Richard, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven and Help of Christians, whom we greet in the words of the angel, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Pope Francis, Patriarch Bartholomew, Archbishop Justin, Martin, our bishop, Will, his suffragan, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Peter, Richard, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. May the tribute of my humble ministry be pleasing to you, Holy Church.